And good morning and once again a warm welcome to our service of the word on a Wednesday uh, morning. Things are changing aren't they and it won't be too long actually before we're all together again uh, in, in church with our service. But in the meantime we meet in this way and we pray that God will bless us and that he will meet with us as we seek his face. So let's just still our hearts and our minds, leaving behind all the thoughts of the past few hours or days, those things that are dominating our lives and just resting in him for a moment or two as we seek his help and his grace at this time. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also so with, with you. you. Give us the joy of your saving help. And sustain us with your life-giving spirit. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Let us now spend a moment in quiet reflection, thanking God for all those things that have been right and good and true in our lives since we last met in this way. But also remembering that no one is perfect and so we are in constant need of forgiveness. And so we ask for God's forgiveness as we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord. For he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. And in our song will we, will we praise, praise our, our God. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, who as at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and uh, forever. Amen. Amen. Last Sunday was Pentecost Sunday when we remembered the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the early disciples as they met in that upper room in Jerusalem. It was a special day, a day when we opened our hearts and our lives afresh to receive a new blessing from the Holy Spirit wherever we may be in life and whatever we find ourselves, whatever circumstances are there. And that is what prompted me uh, to turn in my scriptures to Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, where St. Paul says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us 
in our weakness. Sometimes when we think of the Holy Spirit, we, we think of the Holy Spirit in a very triumphalist way, power and authority and blessing. But actually, in our everyday lives, one of the most effective ways in which the Holy Spirit comes to help us is when he ministers to us in our weaknesses. The early church consisted of people who needed help. They too were needy people living in a world which was often hostile to the faith they held. Our Lord promised help in the shape and person of the Holy Spirit and we see how this worked out through the experience of the early church and the Acts of the Apostles and, of course, the letters. But here, St Paul reminds the Christians in Rome that the Holy Spirit comes to help them in their times of weakness and trial and maybe even doubts. The Greek word for help conveys three different meanings. And as we all know, this is one of the problems of translation from Greek into English when no one English word will suffice in interpreting the Greek language. There are three meanings here in this word, which I think will be good for us to look at uh, a little closer. The first meaning is this. This is something that is a fact. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. This is a fact. This is something we can rely on. This is not fantasy. It is a fact of Christian experience. The arm of flesh will often fail us, but not the person and ministry of the Holy Spirit. And again and again, when speaking of the Holy Spirit, our Lord refers to the help that he comes to bring. One of the translations refers to the Holy Spirit as the Comforter. Another one as the Advocate, as the Guide. Yes, this is something we can rely on. Whatever else happens to you and I in life, this is something we can lie on. We may be weak. We may fail. We may have doubts. We may go through trials. But in all of these things, we can depend wholeheartedly on the Holy Spirit who comes to help us in our time of need. But the second meaning of the word help is this, that it is something done with our help. This is never automatic. It's not an armchair kind of help. Some people want all the benefits, but none of the responsibilities. If this help is to be a reality, there must be cooperation. A man had a beautiful garden. And one day when the vicar of the parish called, he invited him in and he took him out to the garden to survey all that was there. And the vicar, not being a great gardener, just simply said, isn't the handiwork of God marvellous? To which the man replied, Aye, vicar, but you should have seen my garden when God had it all to himself. Do you get the message? It is through obedience and willing cooperation that we receive the blessings of the Lord. Every promise of God in Scripture is conditional. Listen to some. If we come to him, we will have rest. If we wait upon him, 
we will renew our strength. God's promises always have conditions. We must respond. Let us therefore, says the writer to Hebrews, come boldly to the throne of grace, that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. How is your response to the promises of God? But the last uh, meaning of help is this. It is something that will always happen. There can be no circumstances whereby the Holy Spirit cannot help when we are yielded and surrendered to God's way. No situation in life is beyond his help. The problem is that few people really believe in the God of the impossible. There will never be a period of history when this help isn't available. There is no place where the Spirit isn't present, even to the ends of the earth. So let us be encouraged by this and seek through obedience and faith to discover for ourselves this help of the Spirit in all situations, whatever circumstances we may find ourselves in. Help means something that is a fact, something that is done with our help. It means something that will always happen. There are always times in life when we need help. An Irishman lived with his mother and was woken up one night by frantic knocking at the front door. Opening the bedroom window, the man said, uh, what do you want? And the voice came back, can you give me a push? Go away, he said, it's late at night. Now, the Irishman's mother wasn't at all impressed. That's a bit harsh, she said. You never know when you might need some help at the dead of night. So he thought better of it. Give me time to dress and I'll come to help you, he said. So he got dressed and went out into the night. Where are you? he shouted. And the reply came back. I'm down here sitting on the swing. Well, there are times when you and I need a push and at Pentecost we are encouraged by the Holy Spirit and he gives us that push, that help that we really, really need. Likewise, the Spirit, says Paul, helps us in our weakness. Amen. Now it's a time for our prayer. So let's just quieten our hearts and our minds as we respond, God. Dear Lord, we thank you that you have given to us your Holy Spirit. That he is our counsellor, our advocate our comforter, that he is our help in times of trouble. Uh, dear Lord, help us to open our hearts and lives to you, to receive that gracious promise. And through all the changing scenes of life, dear Lord, may we rely on that Spirit who meets us at the point of our greatest need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We think of the world today, the world that God loves, 
and gave his son Jesus for. We think of the Middle East and we thank God for that measure of peace that is there at the moment. We think of Belarus. We pray for that country, for its people, and for the young man who was taken off that plane, for his family and his loved ones. We think of India and the continued work to combat the effect of coronavirus. We think of the people of Brazil as they struggle with the effects of this virus. Oh dear Lord, have mercy. And although, Lord, people live as if you didn't exist, Lord, we pray that you will not judge them for that, and that you'll have mercy upon them and grant them, Lord, the help of your Spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray for our own nation at this time and for our government and all who are making decisions that affect our lives. We pray, Lord, that they will be led to make wise decisions. Lord, that you will give our leaders a heart for truth and righteousness. Because we know, Lord, that righteousness exalts a nation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you, Lord, for our National Health Service. We thank you for the doctors and the nurses, the medical staff and all, Lord, who work to keep our hospitals open and clean and healthy. We thank you, Lord, for those who research new ways of combating disease. We thank you for their skill, for the insights they bring to modern medicine. We thank you, dear Lord, that through this vaccine, many have had a measure of health and strength. We pray for your blessing upon the coming weeks. And we ask, dear Lord, that there will be an end to the restrictions that we've all been living under and that once again we may have the freedom of a reasonable normality. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And Lord, we pray to you today for those who are ill, for those who are vulnerable and those who are fearful, and particularly, Lord, for those who are gravely ill. We want to remember before your throne of grace those who have requested that your church, your body, would pray for them in their hour of need. We think of Margaret Miller, Peg Malpass, Anthony Staples, Anne Bateman, Kate Brantingham, Gary Pollock, Stephen Bradburn, Teresa and Isla, Victoria Pitton, Karen Hind, Charles McCumber, Eric Farr, Rowan Goldell, Catherine Herschel, Stuart Jacks, Rob Fochander, Barbara, Eileen, Annie, Anne Webb and Alex. Lord, we lift them before your throne of grace, knowing that you alone know their beginning and their ending. You alone know their situations and circumstances. And we pray that as your touch has not lost its ancient power, so they may know your touch upon their lives now as we pray for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
and we spend a moment as we remember those who have died, those whom we love but see no longer, those with whom we have walked, those who have been part of our earthly pilgrimage. We pray for all who miss them in their passing from this world, praying that they and we may know your comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Gathering all our prayers and praises into one, we now pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Now and forever. Amen. Spirit of God divine, fill this heart of mine with holy flame to praise the name of Jesus my Lord. Fill me anew, fill me anew, fill me anew, anew O oh Spirit of the Lord. The Lord be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Help us to be a blessing to each other and our communities, that your ways may be known among us. Let all the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Our service uh, next Sunday will be at 9.30 in St Luke's. It will be the service of Holy Communion, and this service will be led by uh, the vicar. Thank you for joining with me in this time together, and may God bless you until we meet again in his name. Goodbye.